Good afternoon, folks. I'm outside today because in this video I'm going to be doing something new to the channel. I'm going to be learning how to use one of these. This is a Pash, whatever this part number is, airbrush, and I've decided that it's finally time to upgrade from rattle cans and learn how to paint models the correct way. So that's what we're going to do today. I have run a little bit of paint through this just to get a feel for it, but I have never painted an actual model with it. So we're going to figure out what that's like. What we're going to paint today are these HO scale passenger cars. They're an old used set that I picked up very cheap, so it's not the end of the world if I mess them up. I'm not even sure who made them. I think they might be old MDC kits, but I'm not certain. Comment down below if you recognize them. The previous owner hand painted them in a fictional livery, and because I'm lazy, I decided to just paint over it rather than stripping the old paint off first. This is my paint booth. It's just a couple of uh, foam core board pieces taped to the fence so they won't blow over. And it's pretty rudimentary, but it'll get the job done for today. So with the airbrush hooked up to the compressor, what we need to do is turn the compressor on. And it's going to run for a second until it builds up the correct amount of pressure. So that's sitting at about 30 PSI. What happens is you spray it through the airbrush, the pressure goes down to 20, and then the compressor runs to keep it at 20 as long as you're spraying. And then when you let go, it builds back up to 30 and shuts off. So this compressor has enough power to keep it at 20 while you're spraying, and that's perfectly fine for painting models. If I was running a really big airbrush, I might need more than that, but this is the compressor that Pash recommends to use with this airbrush, and it seems to work just fine. So that's what we're going to do. Now this is a double action airbrush as opposed to a single action airbrush, and what that means is that I have separate control over the flow of air and the flow of paint. So to open up the air valve, I push this down, and it's now blowing just air. There's no paint in it at the moment, but there will be. And then the more I pull this back, the more it mixes in airflow through the paint cup. So if I pull this back fully, it's like a spray can where it's doing equal amounts of air and paint, roughly. And then I can sort of feather it like that if I just want to do a very light coat of paint. So that's a useful feature to have. Single action airbrushes are basically like this all the time, where it's just on or off. And what the other advantage of this is that when I'm done spraying paint, I can push this down and spray just air, and that helps clean it out. So I've taken apart the passenger cars just to the part that I want to paint. So I've taken off the roofs and the undercarriages. And now I'm going to start with the baggage car because that's the one that I'm least emotionally invested in, I guess. If I mess this one up, it's not going to be the end of the world. This is the paint we're going to be using. Ignore the Tamiya jar. This is actually Vallejo paint. It's a bunch of Vallejo model air colors mixed together. I was trying to get this sort of dark maroon look, kind of like Canadian Pacific maroon. It didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted, but it's close enough for our first project. So that's what we're going to use. So before I start painting the model, I'm just going to do a few test strokes up here to check that the airbrush is working properly. Look at that. Look at how finely I have control over that. I pull it back a little bit more, you get a thicker spray. I do just, I can do just a very light coating of it. This is the great thing about airbrushes that you don't get with rattle cans. You have such... This paint cup is open on the top, and I forgot that. Well, you live and you learn. Luckily, it didn't get on the model. But yeah, look at how precise that is. See, I can do a nice, even coat one little bit at a time. I can very precisely fill in places where it's not heavy enough. All right, well, with some trepidation, I'm going to get started on the model itself. It's not fully covered, but I'm going to let it dry before I do another coat. Shouldn't take very long. You can see whether it's dry by looking at the surface, and if it's shiny, it's still wet. And just like that, the shininess has dulled down. It's been less than a minute. Airbrush paint dries very quickly, so let's add another coat. Alright, that looks like it covered pretty well, so we'll let that dry, and then we'll Actually, we don't even need to let that dry. We can literally turn it around and do the other side right now if we want to. We can actually sort of watch the paint drying as the wind hits it. I 
should probably have mentioned this at the beginning, but I also took the plastic clear windows out of the cars, obviously, because you don't want to paint over those. I'm going to put new ones in when the whole project is done. So this isn't completely dry yet, but one thing I'm noticing about this paint job is that you can actually see a little bit of the brush strokes from the previous owner's paint job underneath. Now this isn't a huge deal, because these are cheap cars and I'm not totally... These, these aren't going to be super fancy, but it's just an interesting thing to note that airbrush paint covers in such a fine layer that you can see the texture underneath it, even if that includes brush strokes. So to speed things up a bit, I'm going to do the next three cars all at once, because now I know my process works. So I'm just going to line them up. Well, maybe not three at once. Maybe I'll do... No, no I could probably do three. Okay, yeah, I'll do it like that. realize I can turn these around and do the other side while the first side is drying. That'll save me some time. So we're going to have to take the airbrush apart to fully clean it, and I kind of expected this. So let's turn off the compressor, let off the excess pressure, and disconnect the hose. This actually comes with a little wrench, which we're going to need for this, because this has to be tightened down really far. There we go. So that comes off, and actually this little end comes off here as well, and you can see there's still paint all over that. They do make an airbrush cleaner specifically for this, but because it's kind of expensive and I don't want to even waste all of it, I'm just going to use rubbing alcohol for as much of this as I can. Am I doing this right? Somebody who works with airbrushes, please let me know in the comments. I think I'm supposed to pull the pin out as well. Yeah, you can see there's some paint on that. Gotta be careful not to bend this pan, although the airbrush does come with spares in case you do mess it up. So that goes there, and then this goes on over the top of it, and that has to be really tightened down. And then the pin goes in from the back, push it until you get it there, tighten this down. You can see how the pin goes in and out of the hole at the end. That's how the airbrush controls the flow of paint. This goes on over the back, and then this little shield thing goes on the front, which you don't really need, but it helps prevent the pin from getting stuck in things. Make sure that this is fully tightened down. I'm gonna hook it back up to the air, and try spraying some water through it just to make sure it's all working properly. Turns out it's really tricky to clean out this little tube on the paint cup. Uh, I wish I had some kind of like really fine Q-tip that I could stick in there. As it is, I'm just running liquid through it until it's clean. Alright, so I've sprayed some water through it, so I know it's working fine. I'm going to spray some airbrush cleaner through it as one last step, just to make sure. Alright, and that's pretty much done. It's, it's empty now, there's no liquid in it, so I can take the paint cup off. And call it a day. And then now we just wait for the paint to dry, put the passenger cars back together, and see how they look. And obviously clean up all this. So these are the painted car bodies. The color did come out a little on the dark and dull side, but it doesn't look too far off of, let's say, very faded Canadian Pacific maroon or even Pennsylvania Tuscan red. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. We'll see how they look once they're put back together, and of course they still need to be lettered and the windows put back in. I'll probably save that for a future video or just do it off camera. 
In any case, uh, I'm gonna let these dry for a little bit and then go back in and see how they look. After the paint was dry, I put the cars back together. The color turned out a little bit darker and less vivid than I was hoping for, so I might end up painting these again at some point. But for my first real airbrush project, I'm quite happy with how they turned out. I do still need to letter them and put the windows back in. Airbrushing gives you so much more flexibility and precision than rattle can paints, and my only regret is not getting started with it sooner. I obviously still have a lot to learn, but that's all part of the fun. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.